This is the hardest defense to play against in Madden 23. Woo! It stops the run. Get over here! Plays airtight pass coverage. And gets interceptions all game. This defense is so good that it's the only defense I use and I allow only 7 points a game in online play which would be good enough for top 5 in the top 100 leaderboard. So if you want to see what defense I'm using to get results like this, stick around after the intro. The here. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. In today's video, I'll once again be using my Saints offense and multi deep defensive ebooks as I think these are the two best playbooks to use in Madden right now. I'll once again be using my Philadelphia Eagles and even though we didn't get the win yesterday, I'm proud of my squad. We have a good young team and Jalen Hurts proved that he's one of the best quarterbacks, if not one of the best players in the entire league, playing the way he did on the world's biggest stage. So we'll definitely be back and I'm definitely not going anywhere. I'm still going to be rocking my squad. Before I get into the video though, as always, if you guys are enjoying the content, please make Woo! sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the video and the channel. And if you want to see more money plays on offense or defense right now from any of these ebooks, all you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pinned comment to have them sent to the email of your choice for instant download. I start this game out on offense and I'm going to be using a lot of different formations, but in this gameplay, I'm going to be starting out with my gun stack Y flex offense. I've already put out a lot of content from this, so if you guys want to see more, I'll have links in the description as well as on screen pops at the end of the video. So stick around for that but today i'll be focusing mostly on defense on the first play of the game i see my opponent is in a cover one man with no safety help so i take a shot right away break yourself fool After that, I dink and dunk to get closer to the end zone. Once I get inside the five yard line, though, I make a bad read. Thank you. Windows tinted on my ride, but I drive it. And he has gone instantly to take a quick 7 0 lead. Damn it. So, since he is still in man coverage, I switch over to my gun empty Y Saint offense, starting with the Saints corner play, which is a play that I put out recently in my most recent glitch routes video that I'll once again have a link in the description for. As he gets right past the cover one and cover zero defenses like this. <laughs> After that, I just make a zig route adjustment to get a one-on-one -on -one with no one else on this side of the field, and we almost score from 50 yards away on a simple catch and run before punching it in with a quarterback sneak on the very next play to tie it up. On defense, I'll once again be using the dime normal formation that I put out last week, only this time, I will mostly be using only one play, the cover two man. As at this point, I found a few new adjustments that make this defense almost impossible to play against. The only personnel adjustment that I will make is to put whatever safety I have left at the middle linebacker spot, which will give me seven defensive backs on the field with just four rushing linemen. The setup for this play is really easy. On the first play, since I don't know if my opponent likes to run or pass, I usually set up to stop the run first, because if if you can take away the run, it will usually turn your opponent into a one-dimensional player. To set up the run defense, all you have to do is pinch the defensive line, which is D-pad to the left and down, and look how tight the formation comes together. This type of tight alignment is really unique and can't be replicated from too many defenses, as most nickel and dime formations will still have large gaps even after making this adjustment, which is one of the main reasons this play from this formation is so much better than cover two man from anything else, as the coverage might play the same, but the run defense and pass rush from this formation are going to to perform much better. After that, the next most important step is to choose which player I'm going to use her, which can change based off of my opponent's offensive formation. You always want to try to choose a player that has as little responsibility as possible, and on this defense, that is going to be one of three players. The first being the middle linebacker slash sub package safety that is manned to the running back. This is only a good option if your running back is pass blocking, but if he goes out on a route, it's going to take you away from using him in the middle of the field. The next option is one of the deep safeties, which can be a problem if there's too many receivers in that area and you're not very good at covering deep. And your last option is one of the rushing defensive ends or even the defensive tackles, which will hurt your pass rush and it won't make you very effective against run defense. Based off of the formation that my opponent is running, the player with the least responsibility is the safety on the tight end side because there is no receiver out wide that will require over the top safety help as the defender man to the tight end has almost no chance of getting burnt for a touchdown since tight ends are not fast enough. So in this play, I'll use the safety, drop him into the box, and on the first play, despite him running an inside zone, you can see how the tight alignment forces him outside as that is the only area where there's room to run. 
On the next play, I'll make another new adjustment, this time with the other safety by moving him closer to the line of scrimmage to help out in run support. I will also move him closer to the sideline as a simple fade route by the outside receiver can be a problem deep, but not if you move him to outside like this. I pinch the D-line once again, but as far as the coverage adjustments go, I will also want to press the defensive backs by hitting the wire triangle and button and down on the left stick, then shading underneath by hitting the wire triangle button again and down the right stick. This adjustment will prioritize short routes, allowing the safeties to take care of any deep routes. Giving you the best of both worlds in coverage is on the next play, he completes a short pass over the middle, only to be tackled immediately. There's a lot of coaching adjustments to make, but one of the most important ones is to make sure to put your ball in the air defense to play a receiver, as you'll notice you'll get a lot more knockouts from tight coverage like on the last play. I also make sure to set my cornerback matchups to overall so that my star cornerback is always on their star receiver and coverage. And I'll also make sure to put my flats to five yards as that adjustment will come in handy later in the video. On the next play, you'll see exactly why I prefer to use the safety as I start the play on the player responsible for the running back only to get burned on the route because I'm stuck between deciding which receiver I need to cover. Now that he is coming out in even formations with two receivers on both sides of the field, it's a little bit harder to choose which safety I should use, but I choose the short side of the field since the sideline will most likely force the wide receivers on this side of the field to run crossing patterns over the middle rather than test the boundary and that's exactly what happens as he picks up another first down on the next play i switch up the coverage at the last minute in hopes that he makes a bad read then on second and one i switch to cover three blitz but he runs right up the middle and gets into the red zone i now switch over to a man zero blitz and he reads it right away to get it to the running back in the flats as no one is in coverage so i switch over to another man zero blitz that actually covers the running back on its own in the dollar three two zero blitz which is a really underrated play as it completely stops the bleeding get over here getting the stop on the next play against the run i call it again on third and four and the pressure gets through right up the middle forcing a quick throw that results in a knockout he goes for it on fourth and four and this time the pressure comes off the edge before the play can develop Woo! and he can't even get the ball away. Back in offense, we just start pounding the rock as he's done a lot of small packages running man zero blitz. I switch back to my empty Y Saint Saints fork play on third and seven as I need to get down the field in a hurry. And on the next play, the streaking tight end is wide open over the middle. Then on third and 10, I complete a tight window throw over the middle to get inside the 10 before making a ton of man coverage adjustments on the next play and just making a huge play with AJ Brown. Just like that! to punch it in. I give the ball back with only 10 seconds left and I probably was playing too soft a coverage as he hits Austin Eckler underneath for a big catch and run to get him into field goal range with only seconds left to cut my lead 14 to 10. He also gets the ball to start the second half, and he goes right back to Eckler on that exact same route. So when I get back to the huddle, I make a substitution swapping Kayvon Wallace and Reed Blankenship, and hope that he does a better job in man coverage against that route. It works well enough as on the next play, he goes somewhere else for five yards before trying Eckler again to get shut down. How about new? Then on third and five, he hits someone else entirely again, as we might have found the answer for the running back. But he is now hitting the flats with an out route, so on the next play, I'm going to make another new adjustment, which is something that I've done for years. And on the next play, I'm going to put the defensive end in the area of the bunch into a cloud flat. And you can see he's in a perfect position to swat that ball away. No! So on the next play, I make that adjustment again, only to find that he completely abandons that idea and decides to throw a crossing route. Gotcha, bitch! that ends in an interception. It looks like I have nothing but green grass in front of me, but Bradbury just isn't fast enough. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. And now with him still running a lot of man zero blitz, I go right back to the drive age wheel, one play touchdown that I started the game with, only this time, he isn't watching it with his user. On defense, he is now coming out in an empty backfield stack look, and I know just how glitchy stack wide receiver sets can be against man coverage. I start out using the safety to see him throw quickly underneath, so on the next play, I switch to the defensive end so I could drop underneath that route. And since there's no running back on the field, I can also spread the defensive line and guess pass with the remaining rushers. On the next play, we get an incomplete pass, and now that I am dropping underneath that route, he has to hold it and go somewhere else. Nope resulting in another incomplete pass. On the next play, he takes a very long time to pick a play as his gun is clearly out of bullets. and he's having a hard time figuring out what to do against his defense. Then on the next play, he converts that very same play on a simple corner route before going right back to it on the very next play to get inside the 10-yard line. We also get a quick look at his stats as he only has 181 yards passing and just barely over 200 yards total as we're almost in the fourth quarter and he's only scored three points on offense. On the next play to stop that route, I move the safety in that area way outside this time to start the play as he tries to go right back to it. Gotcha. 
gotcha, bitch. Only this time we get a very different result as the cornerback makes the play on the double team, making a comeback very difficult now. On offense, I could decide to kill clock, but I instead decide to go for the dagger as I choose another play from my latest glitch routes video in the single back deuce close PA post X cross. As putting the tight ends in the delay phase can be very glitchy. Break yourself, fool! <laughs> And I don't even know what defense he was in, but nothing was covered as we take this to the house for another one play touchdown to end the game as he never even scored an offensive touchdown. See ya! So if that's, that's the video, if you guys like this type of video, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. It really helps out the video on the channel. Other than that, I will have more videos about the offense I was using in this gameplay popping up on screen. So if you guys want to know more about that, just click the links as I'm sure it'll help with your game. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. For more help or just want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.